Recognizing Jesus, who is King of the Lord, King and Lord of the universe, the King of hearts, as we gather together, remembering that we are his subjects, his people. Let us call to mind those times when we have turned away from his kingly care. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie, Kyrie, Christe, Christe, Son, King of the Universe. 
grants, we pray, that the whole of creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty's service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. All the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron. Look, they said, we are your own flesh and blood. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led Israel in all their exploits. And the Lord said to you, you are the man who shall be shepherd of my people Israel. You shall be the leader of Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king of Hebron, and King David made a pact with them at Hebron, in the presence of the Lord. And they anointed David king of Israel. The word of the Lord. I rejoiced when I heard them say, let us go to God's house. I rejoiced when I heard them say, Let us go to God's house. And now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city, strongly compact. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. For Israel's law it is, there to praise the Lord's name. There were set the thrones of judgment at the house of David. save himself if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers mocked him too, and when they approached to offer him vinegar, they said, If you are the King of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription, This is the King of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging there abused him. Are you not the Christ, he said? Save yourself and us as well. But the other spoke up and rebuked him. Have you no fear of God at all, he said. You got the same sentence as he did, but in our case we deserved it. We are paying for what we did, but this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Indeed, I promise you, he replied. Today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia.
Some of you may have seen the film Monty Python and the Holy Grail. It's one of those uh, lovely, funny films, um, a great, good comedy. There's one scene in it which always sticks in my mind, and it's uh, King John and his, uh, his followers, his knights of the round table, or King Arthur rather, and the knights of the round table, who are um, on their horses that the filmmakers were on a very cheap budget, so they couldn't afford real horses, so they used coconut shells to mimic the sound of the hooves of the horses as they clicked along. And so King Arthur was clipping his coconut shells with his disciples, and they, they passed two, two peasants who were wrestling in the mud, absolutely filthy. One of the pe peasants looked up, Michael Palin, I think was the actor, and he said to the other peasant with whom he was fighting, that's a king, that is. And the other peasant said, how do you know he's a king? The one peasant, Michael Palin, said, he's not covered in mud. It's a very simple and funny line. Um, and for me, it stressed the great difference there is between earthly rulers and the common people. And in fact, if you look at the concept of kings throughout the ages and centuries, you always see that great gulf that there is between the power and authority and rich and wealth of human uh, kings and queens and the common people. Whilst in today's society, the role of the king and or the queen has diminished remarkably. But at the same time, I'm sure that we can agree there is still a great gulf between us and the earthly rulers of this world. What we see in Jesus, though, King of the universe, is not somebody who is distant and far away in a palace surrounded by courtiers and servants, but a King who is in our midst, who is in the mud with us. A king who loves us unconditionally. A king who dies for us. A king who is a shepherd, a guide, a brother, a companion. A king who is servant to us all. This feast day of Christ the King is not to so much ponder on the glory and majesty of Christ, because that indeed is also the truth, but rather his brotherhood with each and every one of us, that we are not just his subjects, but we are his brothers and sisters. So we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Though we may be apart from one another physically, we turn to our Heavenly Father together in Christ with our prayers and petitions. For the Church, that our belief in Christ as King will lead us to value the things of God's Kingdom more than the things of earth. Lord, in your mercy, For young people, that they may have hope in Christ Jesus, that by working together they can build a better world through compassion for others and care of the planet. Lord, in your mercy, for those working in hospitals and laboratories on treating the virus, on treating those who have the virus, developing vaccines, that they may be supported by our prayers and succeed in their endeavours. Lord, in your mercy, for those in need and those who have the means to offer aid, that Christ is recognised in the needy and offered whatever we can afford to support and help even if all we have is prayer. Lord, in your mercy, we bring before God those who have died, those whose anniversaries occur at this time, and those who mourn. With the whole diocese today, we pray for all university, college, and school chaplaincies and for our own parish, that we, we may be the light to those we meet. Lord, in your mercy, we ask Mary, Mother of Christ the King, to pray with us and for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the silence of our hearts, we turn to our Father with our personal intentions. Heavenly Father, look upon us, your servants, and hear these prayers we make in faith, that we may dedicate our lives to serving you and all those who need our care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, thanks to your goodness this bread we offer, fruit of the earth, work of our hands, it will become the bread of life. Blessed be God, blessed be God, blessed be God forever, amen. 
Blessed be God, blessed be God, blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Thanks to your goodness, this wine we offer, fruit of the vine, work of our hands. It will become the cup of life. Blessed be God, blessed be God, blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed be God, blessed be God, blessed be God forever. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and king of all creation. So that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule. He might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. And so with the angels and archangels, we proclaim the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Oh. 
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Declan, our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Teresa Geherty, for whom we offer this Mass, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever. Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, hallowed be thy name, thy King Kingdom come, thy will be done upon the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. Does not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the Kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now. forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And if you are with somebody this morning in your bubble, offer them the sign of peace, and I give you all a big wave. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We pray together an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since many cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into our hearts. We embrace you as if you were there already, and unite ourselves wholly to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, the glory in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Hope you're all keeping very safe and well. As I mentioned at the beginning of Mass on Sunday next, we begin the beautiful, lovely season of Advent, and I hope by the second Sunday of Advent, we will be able to celebrate together here in church. Let us hope so. Also, if we are allowed to celebrate Mass over the Christmas period, the bishops of England and Wales have told us that from the first Mass of Christmas to the 31st of December, every day will be Christmas Day. By that, I think they're encouraging us not to think that we all have to come to church on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, um, but we can come to church over those eight days, that octave of Christmas, so that we can keep our building safe um, for all, hopefully, to enjoy. That said, we will be having um, 
many Masses on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And um, I've invited people, you may have seen the newsletter, some of you who get the newsletter, um, to volunteer to sing a solo carol at one of our Masses. So if you feel you have the courage to sing Silent Nights or We Three Kings of Orient, oh, that's really an epiphany. But anyway, that's not the point. If you feel you would like to sing a solo, which we are allowed to do, uh, but not congregational singing, then drop me an email um, and tell me what mass you'll be attending um, and what you would like to sing. Or give me a buzz on the phone. Oh, come, all ye faithful, you know. Anyway, if you feel you um, have the courage, then please do. We've already had two volunteers, which is great, uh, at two different masses. Uh, anyway, long time ago before Christmas, though, um, we have that wonderful season of Advent, uh, where we remember that, indeed, God's kingdom will come, as well as the stable in Bethlehem. Have a good day, everyone. Our final hymn is uh, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. You have a hymn book number 37. Why have you got a hymn book, by the way? They should be here. I know people do accidentally take them home with them quite often. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, say. Jesus is the scepter, is the throne. Alleluia, is the triumph, is the victory alone. Hark the songs of peaceful Zion, thunder like a mighty flood. Jesus, out of every nation, hath redeemed us by his blood. Last verse. Alleluia, King eternal, thee the Lord of lords we own. Alleluia, born of Mary, Footstool, heaven, thy throne. Thou within the veil hast entered, robed in flesh, our great high priest. Thou